Hello, in this video we're going to make a complex terrain model out of some conventional topo and a point cloud from OSIP. So we're going to combine those together. So I'm logged into the connection client and now I'm going to go into project wise and I'm going to open a seed file as a launching point so I can use the create design files application. In a previous video uh, I've created a terrain model from a point cloud uh, using two different methods. Uh, and then we also have a field book with some conventional surveyed um, topo inside it. And we're going to combine those together inside a field book um, digital terrain file, or a field digital terrain file. So that field digital terrain file is an, uh, has a two character code of FD, and this is going to allow us to create a complex terrain without having multiple terrains inside one file um, to alleviate some of that confusion that might happen with uh, which file, which terrain model should be uh, set as active inside the design file for, for targeting and other purposes in the design workflow. So as this is opening up, I'm going to switch my workflow to ODOT tab, or the ODOT workflow, Ohio DOT, and I'm going to open that Create Design Files application. So I happen to know the, the two character codes, so I'm going to go ahead and use that when searching FD, and I'm going to find my field digital terrain model uh, base map file, and it's in the survey category, and it's going to be written once it's created in that 300 survey folder base maps. I'm going to go ahead and check this on to create it, and I'm going to pick my seed, and I'm going to use a 3D seed um, for this file type. In my settings, I happen to have open last created uh, file on, so as since I'm only creating one file, it's going to open that file directly as soon as I hit the create button. You could also put some comments in here as well um, to help uh, identify what that uh, file is. Um, so it's asking me to check back in my seed file. I can I can free it since I didn't make any changes to that that file as I had it open um, since I'm using project wise. And as this file creates, I'm going to go ahead and close my Create Design Files application. So now I'm inside my field book, or my field digital terrain file, and I don't have anything inside it. Um, so I'm going to minimize that. And now I'm going to go ahead and attach my references. Um, so I'm going to go into my uh, reference manager, and I'm going to attach my two uh, terrain models that were created um, previously from uh, that conventional survey and the um, uh, point cloud. So I know I want my field book um, that's what, that houses my um, conventionally uh, surveyed uh, terrain model. And I'm also going to grab uh, this point cloud uh, file that I created a terrain model from my OSIP data. I'm going to use uh, interactive um, as my attach method, and I'm going to grab, uh, make sure I have a zero nesting on these files in particular. Um, everything's in the same coordinate system, so we're doing everything on grid uh, in this case for um, training purposes. And I'm going to go ahead and, and attach these, and they, they should line up uh, accordingly. So now that I have my two references in here, I'm going to go ahead and do a fit view. So we can see my terrain model. Um, so this is where uh, previously I had my terrain models on two different levels. Um, so I'm going to have the ability to uh, turn these on and off as I see fit. Um, so we can kind of see some more details later on. So I noticed that my uh, field book file has the uh, feature definition set to boundary. Um, so I'm going to use a feature definition override inside my design file and I'm going to uh, override that symbology on that reference and pick a uh, feature definition that I want to see. So I want to see some um, uh, existing triangles. So I want to see here terrain models and I'm going to put this on existing triangles so we can see that triangulation. So now I'm going to go back into my manager and turn on my field book and my point cloud file. So now we can see I have two terrain models um, and they definitely overlap in some areas uh, and have different elevations. Um, and this is where the technique that's used to create this complex terrain model is going to come into play. 
Um, so now that I have uh, two terrain models in here, we can go ahead and create our complex terrain model. So I'm in the survey workflow, and under the terrain tab, we have uh, additional methods. Um, this is where we can create a complex terrain model. It's also the same area where we created from point cloud um, when we created that, that terrain model from the point cloud file. So in doing this, we get the co uh, create complex terrain model dialog to show up. And I have my two named uh, terrain models. So I have my uh, dark 185 survey, so this is my conventional uh, data. And I also have my OSIP tile that I uh, created a terrain model from. So how I add these is going to be um, important uh, depending on what type of operation I want to do. So the current actions we have, uh, append is currently selected. So an append uses all data from both terrain models. So what that means is it's going to use uh, all the points that were surveyed in as well as all of the points that were inside that LiDAR um, terrain model. Um, so it's going to keep both. And this might be manageable if you, if you want to have that data from if uh, you were using a different source other than OSIP maybe. Um, but if we just want some extra drainage around the outside, we're going to use a different technique. So we're going to use merge. So what merge does is it takes the, the primary uh, terrain model. So if I'm going to use my OSIP data as my primary and add it, so it has primary, and then I'm going to add my um, dark 185 conventional survey. So this OSIP tile, once it's set as my primary, it's going to cookie cutter out my dark 185 survey and merge that in. So what it's going to do is it's going to find the boundary of my uh, conventional terrain model, clip that out, and only use the data from inside my conventional um, survey. So this is more desirable, especially when I'm using OSIP data, um, to use this method so we can have the accuracy of our conventional uh, survey, but also have that wide area that uh, OSIP allows us to have. So this can be very important to make sure you have the process order for the primary and uh, we're going to use a merge command instead of that append just so we can um, break down which um, which data we're going to be using. Um, so now I'm going to uh, grab a feature definition from my dialog box and in my terrain I'm going to select existing and I'm going to go ahead and put it on existing triangles. Uh, actually, I'm going to put it on a different. We'll put it on existing triangles three, just so we don't um, four, just so we don't. Uh, we can turn all these layers on and off, and we can see what actually happened. Uh, I'm not going to use um, any type of filtering with this. Uh, we can always change some of those options later. So I'm going to call this uh, combined um, for now. Uh, follow the the naming conventions for that particular project when you're actually uh, creating a complex terrain model. So I'm going to go ahead and hit finish and it's going to process my uh, terrain models and it's going to merge them together. So it's taking that large OSIP tile, clipping that out, and creating my, my boundaries in for my uh, terrain model. So it's a little confusing to see what's going on right now, so I'm going to start turning off uh, my references. Uh, so I'm going to turn off my reference, both references, or I could have turned the level off. So now we can see that it clipped out my terrain model uh, from my conventional survey and uh, merged that with uh, my OSIP tiles. So now I have my conventional survey on the actual project site, and then if I need to do some drainage calculations, I have that terrain model that larger terrain model to do um, some of that higher level higher level work. So now it acts just like a regular terrain model and the designers can reference this field book in or this field digital terrain and we can always set it active um, and do some targeting and things like that if we need to. So that's creating a complex terrain and a couple of the different options we can use to create that. Thanks for watching.